What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another tier list for you guys. Seeing as it is halfway house in the Premier League, we thought we'd do averages of each and every single player that we've given player ratings to this season, barring the ones that have gone out the door, like Eric Dyer. But um, yeah, we've got a few tiers for you. So it goes from awful to that goes from zero to 4.9. Not good is five to 5.4. Okay is five and a half to 6.4. Uh, good is six and a half to 6.9. Very good is seven to 7.4. And excellent is 7.5 to 10. And we've even got an extra tier in there for you as well, which is uh, player of the season. So the highest rated player will go into that tier. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where these players sit. Obviously, we have had a very strong start to the season first half. And I, I imagine there'll be a lot of high marks. Yeah, I look, I think it's going to be interesting to see where we've rated for the whole season because these are all our player ratings throughout the whole season so far average out so i'm excited to see um how these players are getting on how we've judged them so far this season i think there's going to be a few surprises in here all right well let's get into it and let's start off with our number i was about to say number one number 13 soon to be number one is a vicario and where do you reckon he goes um i think he should go in excellent 100 percent. he should 7.5 Ten point five. So excellent, excellent. just about, yeah, yeah just, just about. about. Well, uh, Brian Daigle, you had you had to eat some of Brian Daigle's ratings because uh, he did some ratings last time. The last couple of games, he's given him a six because he hasn't had much to do, mm. so that's kind of dampened his ratings a bit. But overall, I rate him a seven point five. You rate him a seven point three. But basically, yeah, seven seven point five overall. Um, look, what a strong, strong start to the season. Yeah. Um, he's had unbelievable signing. I can't think. I was actually thinking about it the other day. I can't think of a goal apart from maybe the the second goal against West Ham, where I'm like, he should have done better there, yeah. or like he should he should have saved that shot. Like he's not made any mistakes. He's made a series of amazing saves. He's actually top of the league as well for post shot expected goals. So like he he has kept out more goals than expected than anyone else, anyone else in the league. He's just been an unbelievable signing. Week in, week out, making worldy saves as well. I think he's been the best goalkeeper in the Premier League so far, regardless of the stats. Well, the stats even the back stats that up. Back to, up yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the stats even back that up. So um, I don't think we could have hoped for a better goalkeeper signing, to be honest. You cast your mind back to the transfer window. We're all up in arms, uh, not getting David Rea and bringing in unknown goalkeeper in Vicario. And it's not just like him as a goalkeeper but his mentality as well and his passion around the team is infectious so I'm loving every second of Vicario and uh, like I said we couldn't have wished for a better goalkeeper uh, to, to be a, the successor of Hugo Lloris let's move on let's go to Fraser Forster I imagine he just goes into can't judge because he only played that one game yeah. against Fulham in the cup if we were judging him harshly he goes into a 5.5 which is for that one game because I gave him a 6 you gave him a 5 or the other way around but mm. um, yeah I can't judge yes he has only had one game didn't even play the FA Cup game so. Yeah, moving on is Pedro Porro up next right back been stellar this season I'm hoping he goes into excellent because he deserves it and he does go into excellent 7.6 overall um, so very consistent this season um, most of the time you know getting rated above a 7 you know if 7.6 means a lot of the time he's getting 8s and 9s as mm -hmm. well um, I don't think we've given him about I think the only game below a 7 was we played um, Brighton away he didn't get a great rating for mm -hmm. that and that probably was his poorest performance of the season. And yeah. also Chelsea at home, obviously, when we lost 4-1. Those are the only two games where he didn't get a great rating. Other than that, it's either been 7s, 8s or 9s. Uh, I mean, he's been unbelievable. Yeah. Most assists in the Premier League for a defender at the moment as well. In Europe as well. In Europe. Just shows... The, look, we knew what quality he had last season, right? You saw it um, when we were signing him. But it's so great to see him in a fully functioning system and providing those attacking outputs that we know he can do. Yeah, Dim Tim uh, Sherwood still coming out and yeah, giving oh him all that God, shade. What? I mean, what is he on about? Honestly, he's, he's, it's like when you, a guy knows he's wrong, but he like can't admit it. Yeah. And he, he's like doubling down. He's like finding anything. He's like, a bit like you and Ndombele. Mate, Ndombele. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think Sherwood uh, is an uh, absolute plonker for 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 doubling. He th he's still going on about his defensive efforts. Like, yeah. you haven't watched him this season, clearly. Yeah. Um, he picked the right moment to come out with that, though, because there were a few defensive flaws against Manchester United. <laughs> yeah. But I think all season he's been brilliant, um, to be honest. And that Man United game doesn't take away anything from that. And in terms of like where he ranks in terms of right backs in the Premier League right now, I would say he's probably up there, maybe right back of the season. It's either him or Trent. I mean he's in good company isn't he 100 percent. yeah next up we're gonna go for mickey van der ven um 
He's been unbelievable when he has been on the pitch this season. He has just come back from a lengthy injury three months out. But before he uh, got injured, I mean, he was absolutely faultless. Yeah, and he goes into excellent with an average of eight. Wow. Which is incredible. Um, How many games has he played? He's played, I think he's played, let me see, 11. Let me see here. He's played uh, 13, it says, actually. Okay. He's played 13 games. Um Hasn't dropped a rating below six the whole season, uh, which is incredible. Uh, he did get a 10 out of 10 against Luton away, getting a clean sheet and a goal as well. He's just been an unbelievable signing. We missed him so badly with that when he picked up that injury. So great to have him back. And he literally hasn't had a bad game yet, uh, yeah. which is incredible to think about for a young centre-back in a new league. It's amazing. Yeah, he did look a bit rusty against Manchester United, which is expected after you know being out for so long. But I'm so happy to have him back and I can't wait to see um, him and Romero, even Dragusin, come in there and form that formidable partnerships that they had uh, before the injury came about. So uh, Mickey van der Ven, another one who's just, um, I, would you say it's been a surprise how good he's been? Because I, I think it has been because I thought like when we first signed him, we were all in agreement saying, oh, this guy's going to need time to bed mm -hmm. into the Premier League, such a young defender, uh, not that much, uh, not that many games at the top level behind him as well. And he's just come in, taken it, taken to it like a duck to water. And it seems like he's been in the Premier League for so long. Yeah, I think the performances we were, we're seeing right now from Van de Ven or when he came into the team, those performances we were hoping to see, but down the line, we weren't yeah. expecting to see it like straight away. It's it's not a total surprise like this is how good he can be. It's just a massive surprise how quickly yeah. it's come. And that that's that's the amazing thing about Van der Ven, how he's just bedded in straight away and uh, literally not look back. Exactly. Let's move on and let's go to Kuti Romero, another player who's been unbelievable this season. He has had a few mishaps, to be honest, um, in terms of sending offs and own goals and stuff, giving away penalties and stuff like that. But I think do think he's been absolutely stellar this season and I think he's going to go in excellent as well. He does go in excellent. 7.6 overall as well. Actually level with Porro, which is uh, out, uh, outstanding. The funny thing is, Romero, there's a there's a kind of um, narrative that, you know, maybe it's, you know, he's a liability, all this kind of stuff. And obviously he did have that awful game against Chelsea, which we both gave him a 1 out of 10 for. But, but apart from that one game, he hasn't dropped below a 7. And most of it has been eights and nine. So I think it, that goes to show like that Chelsea game was very much an outlier in the season compared to how he's performed. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously against Arsenal, he had a oh, he had a good game that day, but he did give away a penalty as, mm. and um, score and an own goal as well. So that was a bit disappointing. But I think if you take out that Chelsea game, is he going to be our player of the season if you take that game out? Potentially. Um, I, I, if, you, if I took out that Chelsea game, I mean, I, I don't want to give any spoilers to who got the highest mark, but if I take out that Chelsea game, he's averaging an eight, which is the same as Van de Ven. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's definitely up there for sure. I think he's been unbelievable uh, for the, like whenever he's played. But it's just it's just a shame. It seems like that Chelsea game is the one that's going to stick out mm. in a lot of people's minds, and that's what they'll remember. Yeah, but he's been unbelievable. Um, next up is Radu Dragusin. Obviously, our brand new signing came on in the last stage of the Man United game, so not really many minutes to judge. We haven't given him a rating, so yeah. I guess he goes into can't judge, but I'm very excited to see uh, what comes from him. Next up is Destiny Udogi, uh, star performer for Spurs this season. I think he goes straight into excellent, to be honest, and I think he's been the best left back in the Premier League this season. I agree. Uh, he actually goes into very good, 7.3. So just misses out on excellent, according to us. Um, I think it's only two games, really, that have cost him, to be honest. Chelsea. The Chelsea game, he got sent off. And he had a, and the the West Ham game, he was kind of at fault for both mm. goals, potentially. If yeah, I remember with rightly. the back pass. So he actually got, he got a 4 out of 10 for that and a 2 out of 10 for Chelsea. But other than that, he hasn't dropped below a 6. So it's really harsh, probably. He probably should go into Exxon because with li those literally two games out of the 23 has, has only cost him. So it is quite harsh, but that's what's knocked his average down to it. Only a very good as opposed to an excellent. Mm, it is a shame. But like I said, I do think he's been the best left back in the Premier League this season. I can't think of another left back that's been comparable to him. No. As much as we said on uh, the right back, you know, Trent has probably been comparable to Porro. Mm -hmm. Has anyone been comparable to, to a doggy on the no, left? No, it's like natural left backs. He's been by far and away the best yeah. in the league, I think, so far this season. So I think we probably should bump, bump him up to excellent. All right, bump him up. Go on. Let's bump up Destiny, a doggy to excellent. I think he deserves it as well. Next up, who is that? Madison. Madison. James Madison. Um, well, he hasn't played since he's got injured. Before the injury, he's definitely on excellent because he was probably the best player in the Premier League. Yeah, 7.8. 
So very much an excellent... Um, that means he's nearly averaging an eight, literally getting eight to every game, which is astonishing. Uh, three goals and six assists in his first yeah. 10 games. Um, one of the best players in the Premier League in that in that stretch. Has been injured since then. We've, we've missed him terribly. It's been a massive blow. But what a start to the season. That makes me all the more excited to have him back. Yeah, and he's back now. He's put a picture on Instagram today of his... Uh, Boots filled with or got grass all over them. So he's been on the pitch training. Um, I'm excited to see the Spurs uh, videos come out later and see James Madison in action because he is going to be so important for us the mm. second half of the season. We've missed him so much and uh, we're finally getting our squad back together, which is just such great news. But Madison obviously goes into excellent. Next up is Richarlison. Is yep. that? Yeah, Rishi. So <laughs> we, Rishi could have two different ratings, yeah. one for the pre-surgery and one for post-surgery because pre-surgery, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. Then post-surgery, he's been magnificent. I think seven goals um, or six goals since his surgery because I think one or two came before the surgery. Mm -hmm. So I would say when you're judging everything, everything included, he'd probably say he goes into good. It's very harsh on Rishi because if you take pre-surgery, his average is a six because, you know, the first half of the first four games of the season, remember, he was terrible. We were giving him very bad ratings. And then, um, so, so pre-surgery, his average is a six. Post-surgery, his average is a 7.2. So that go that would put him in very good. So unfortunately, it's an overall six point three. So actually, mm. he only goes into okay, which is I think a bit harsh considering how how good he's been post surgery. So I, w I wouldn't mind bumping him up to good. But uh, if, you, if if we're taking his overall season, it is only okay. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's harsh to judge him pre that because he was playing with an injury. He got mm. that surgery, sorted himself out, and he's been so much better for it. The team's been so much better for it. The goals have um, come in a flurry, haven't they? He's pretty much scored in every game bar one, I think, mm -hmm. since, his, since his surgery. So uh, I'd agree. I'd put it, bump him up to good, to be honest. And if, if you're judging him and comparing it to last season as well, he probably should go into very good, to be honest. But we'll, we'll stick him in just good for now. Uh, next up is our captain, Hyung Min Son. And surely he goes into excellent. Actually, he's only on a 7.2. How? Because, uh, because there's just been some games where uh, I guess we haven't rated him as highly. Um, in fact, your average rating of him is 6.9. Wow. Uh, which is good. Uh, yeah, which is just about gets into good. Um, no. I think he's definitely very good. On the good. higher end of good. I yeah. think he should be excellent, obviously. 12 goals and five assists. Um, I guess the problem with Sonny is there's... When the games where he's not playing well, he can be very anonymous. Mm. So a lot of those times he will get a very low rating, and maybe we're harsher on him because we have high expectations. Whereas if and like if he if he like puts in a performance where like like a Johnson puts it, maybe we would give Johnson like a six or a five because we want to be a bit more lenient. But when Son's putting in an av a bad performance, we will give him like a four because yeah. like we expect so much better than him yeah. from him. But obviously he has had two ten out of ten. So like when he's good as well, we we do bump him up. Obviously he should be an excellent. He has been excellent this season. But you also remember first first bit of the season, he was playing left wing and he wasn't quite there. And then he moved into centre. Yeah, what was that, three games at the start? It was, I think, the first four games at the start, I think he started left he moved, wing. He moved into centre in the Burnley game, which was what, our fourth game of the season, wasn't Burnley it? Burnley was our four, uh, first, second, yeah, uh, fifth game of the season, uh, fifth. Um, including the Carabao. Right. So he was been playing left wing for a lot of that. And he remember at the start, he wasn't great at left wing. He has been good at left wing recently, but at the start he wasn't. So that also counts against him. But... Um, I think it's very harsh not to put him in, not to put him in excellent. He has um, to go in excellent. Yeah, he has to, he go, has to go in excellent. It's not just what he's given us in terms of from a footballing standpoint as well, but from a leadership standpoint as well. He's been absolutely brilliant as our new captain. So he has to go into excellent. He's been incredible this season, Hyung Min Son. Um, the ratings are very harsh, very harsh indeed. But let's move on to Deki. Again, Deki, I felt like he started the season slow, uh, but he's... He's got into the season in a massive way. And I think he's been so important to us over the last couple of months. And he should, I would say he goes into very good, Dejan Kulisevsky. Yeah, seven. So yeah, right into, right into very good. I think he's had a pretty good season. Five goals and two assists, I think, overall. Um, obviously, uh, uh, played on the right wing for a lot of the season, then moved into the centre since Madison's been injured and found a new role for him in, uh, as well. And a role he can be really effective in. He looks really happy there. So I th I'm excited to see him play more in the centre. But um, it'll be interesting to see in the second half of the season, now Madison's back, where we where he gets most of his minutes. 
But I think by and large, he has been very good when he's been on the pitch and he's like done a really good job for the team. So, yeah, I think very good to the right place for him. Yeah, particularly when he's moved into the middle, uh, in my opinion. I think he's been a bit wasted out on the right um, at the start of the season. But since he moved into the middle, when he's so central to the play and everything kind of goes through him, it's been incredible to watch, to be honest. And I'm actually looking forward. I don't know if we're ever going to see it, but maybe against a low block when we have James Madison and Kulisevsky in that mm. middle. I think that would be incredible to see. Um, but quite amazingly, if you bring up that tier list, we'll go to we'll get to Ange Postecoglou in a minute. Not one player in not good or awful, which is just a testament to uh, how good we've been this season. To be honest, well, with the injuries as well. Yeah, I don't think anyone has been. Yeah, it's true. So I think uh, that's unbelievable. If you cast your mind back a year ago today, or not today, but you know a year ago when we would have done this at halfway house last season, we probably wouldn't have had anyone in excellent. Very <laughs> literally. Good. I think only Kane probably yeah. excellent, yeah. So, Madness. yeah. I think Bentancourt as well, because he had a great season. Mm, true. So, yeah, unbelievable to see how much of a reversal it's been from last season and how well these players are performing. In terms of um, our highest rating, bluntly, uh, on, on an average uh, this season, our, our highest average rating does actually go to Mickey van der Ven. He has averaged 8.0. He hasn't had a bad game um, throughout the whole season. Um, he's been phenomenal. Uh, hasn't had below a six the whole season. Um, only and only, only uh, three times has he had a seven. So out of 13 games, he's had three sevens. And, all, and, so, and the other 10 have been eight or above. And that's just showed his a remarkable consistency, how amazing he's adapted to the Premier League. And maybe benefited from the fact that, in a way, he has been injured, so he's had less games to judge from. But in those 13 games, averaging an A is astonishing. Yeah, it is astonishing, and he's been absolutely brilliant. I would say it's a bit unfair on players that have played throughout the whole season uh, to put him as player of the season, because he's just been out for the last three months. Like, such a large chunk of a season, we're only halfway through. <laughs> uh, is he our player of... Uh, look, this is, a, this is judging our player of the season just factually based on our ratings if we're given our player of the season so far as a personal um no who would you give probably i'd either give it to poro or son mm. I, can't, I can't think which one i think poro's actually been more consistent poro son cootie as well son, is in a shout yeah cootie's there as well vicario vicario <laughs> so hard I'll probably give it to Son just because his, his, just him being the captain as well, how he's taken up that role. He's been so amazing. The fact that he's keeping pace with the top goal scorers in the Premier League and as well, not only is he doing that, but he's near the top of the league for like chances created, assists as well. Um, he's having an astonishing season and um, I think he'll probably be my player of the season so far, but Porro, a close second, then Vicario. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to disagree with that, but I've just been super impressed with Porro this season. I mean, I put him in as one of the flops of the season um, oh at the start of God, it. Do you yeah, remember? I did. Um, so he's just completely surprised. My, my two flops of the season, I said, we were going to be Porro and Vicario. Uh, that's why I said at the beginning of the season, and they both could, like completely proved me wrong to be honest. So judging on my expectations, because last season, Porro defensively was getting eaten up alive every single time. And he's definitely been the most improved player this season, mm. Pedro Porro. That, that's hands down. But I think he's got a very strong case for player of the season. Um, Jung Min Son, look, he's been our talisman this season. He's been the one getting the goals and he's been the leader on and off the pitch as well. So it's hard not to pick Jung Min Son. But I think I will just side with Pedro Porro just because I think I think he's been our most consistent performer throughout the season most assists as a defender throughout the whole of Europe which is incredible and I think he's completely brushed up that defensive side of his game where everyone was worried about coming into this season I remember when we played Man United at home at the beginning of this season we were outside the stadium with Brian Daigle and we were reading out the team sheet and I wrote Pedro Porro right back and Brian Daigle, like, he fell to his knees going, oh, why is he playing Pedro Porro? Like, he can't defend. And that 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 game kick-started his season, didn't it? Yeah, it hasn't looked back since then. Yeah, so I, I go for Pedro Porro. Sim goes for um, Hyung Min Son. The tier list says Mickey van der Ven. Exactly. So uh, let look. This the is tier not, list never lies. Never lies. <laughs> Let's run through this tiers once again. It's going to be hard to see from here, but uh, player of the season goes to Mickey van der Ven so far. Excellent is Vicario, Porro, Romero, Saar, Bentancor, Madison, um, Udogi, 
and Hyung Min Son with Ange Postacoglu. Mm. In very good is Dejan Kulisevsky. In good is Ben Davis, Ivan Perisic, Yves Bissouma, Giovanni Lo Celso, Manuel Solomon, mm -hmm. and uh, Brennan Johnson. Richard uh, Sorry, uh, Richarlison. In okay is, I can't see that from here. Uh, Bissouma. Oh, sorry. Emerson, Hoybier, Oli Skip, Brennan Johnson, and Brian Hill. And then he can't judge is Fraser Forster, Dragushin, Sessignon, Alejo Valiz, and, and, and Turbo Timo. So that you is your halfway house tier list. We'll be bringing you, uh, obviously, the monthly ones as we progress through the season. But let me know your thoughts on the tier list. Who is your player of the season? And do you agree with all the rankings that we've given to each and in every individual player? Thank you, everyone, for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.